uh, father of dentistry is uh, Perry Fockard, whereas father of orthodontics is Norman William Kingsley, father of modern orthodontics is Edward Hartley Angle. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we have to see clearly whether it is modern orthodontics or father of orthodontics. If you see the profit textbook, you will know father of modern orthodontics is Edward Hartley Angle. And Kingsley is again credited to using extraoral force, cleft lip palate, all these things are credited to Kingsley. And uh, Angle, innumerous number of contributions, various appliances, classification, everything is credited to Angle. Expansion philosophy and father of expansion is Emerson C. Angel, A N G E L. Okay, you should not confuse that. Now, coming to the classification of Malak Puja, this is relatively simple before going to. After that, we will have a break and then go to Guru Tandana. Zygoma are the key ridge. Key ridge or whenever he was classifying malocclusion angle, he has used key ridge as his basis. Now, key ridge corresponds to what? Now, key ridge corresponds to the mesiobuccal root of the upper first molar. Key ridge corresponds to the mesiobuccal root of the upper first molar. Now, it was basically Spencer Atkinson who has identified the concept of key ridge. Atkinson is the person who has identified the concept of key ridge. Now, key ridge is nothing but it is the lowest point on the outline of zygoma that is in the deciduous dentition this corresponds to the maxillary second molar whereas in the permanent dentition it corresponds to the mesiobuccal root of the maxillary first molar. He has considered this key ridge as a stable vertical reference. The key ridge is considered to be a stable vertical reference. So, basis of this key ridge, he has classified the malocclusion. Now, Angle has classified this malocclusion based, based on the key ridge. Now, key ridge is in line with the mesiobuccal root of the upper first permanent molar. The deciduous dentition, it is the maxillary second molar. So, basically, it is nothing but the zygomatic buttress of the zygomatic bone. This corresponds to the mesiobuccal cusp in line with the mesiobuccal root. So, this is referred to as key ridge, which was given by Spencer Atkinson, and this was used as a basis for angle to classify the malocclusion. So, that is why the biggest drawback of angle's classification is if there is an absence of first permanent molar, you could not classify the dentition, since he has taken the first permanent molar as the basis for his classification. So, in spite of that, it is widely used because it is universally accepted and it is simple to follow. A patient is having edge to edge or an end on molar relationship in relation to the first permanent molar with retroclination of incisors. So, according to angle, it is classified as class 2 division 2. The reason is any class 2, there is a edge to edge or endonish molar relationship or a class 2 molar. Now, class 2 molar is nothing but the distobuccal cusp of the upper first permanent molar is in the buccal groove of the lower first molar. Normally, a class 1 malocclusion is the mesiobuccal cusp of the upper first permanent molar is in the buccal groove of the buccal groove of the lower first permanent molar. Whereas, in a class 2, it is whenever it is a deviation from the mesiobuccal cusp, it is either edge to edge or end on molar relationship what we call or the distobuccal cusp in the buccal group or a classical class 2 molar relationship. In class 2, you have got two components that is division 1 and division 2 based on the proclination or the inclination of the incisors. If the upper incisors are proclined, the upper incisors are proclined and the patient exhibits a overjet then it is called as a class 2 division 1. Like classical example is a thumb sucking patient, which I have told you earlier, where the upper incisors are proclined. And then a class 2 division 2 is where the upper incisors are retroclined and the upper central incisors especially are retroclined, whereas the lateral incisors are normal or proclined. Okay. And they have a square type of face and a flat face, relatively a short face. So, they are class 2 division 2 malocclusion, whereas class 3 is where the mesiobuccal cusp is in between your molars, lower molars, where class 3 where you see the upper dentition behind and the lower dentition forward, that is your 
class 3 mole activation. Okay. So, end on relation is nothing but your class 2 relationship and end to end or one half cusp is called as a class 2 mole occlusion. Now, anterior cross bites according to the way are classified in angles class 3 as. Now, angles class 1, class 2, class 3 are further modified by the way into subclasses. So, in class 3 anterior cross bite is belongs to type C. See type 1 is the upper and lower dental arches when viewed separately in the normal alignment, but the arches are or the patient tries to get into a edge to edge alignment. In type 1 of the waist modification is the alignment in both the upper and lower arches is similar, whereas the patient tries to get the upper and lower arches into a, an edge to edge fashion. Okay. Whereas in type 2 the mandibular incisors are crowded the lower incisors are crowded and they are lingual that is they are behind the upper incisors. Whereas, in type 3 the maxillary incisors are crowded and are in cross bite, cross bite is nothing but the upper incisors are behind and the lower incisors are forward. 